This is Original Intent. Today is February 21st, 2024. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is of vital importance to anyone who owns stock, including if you just have a 401k or a pension fund that is invested in the stock market, or if you're a day trader, anything like that. Very important information. I don't believe in stringing people along for 30 minutes before making my point. I respect your time. So now and in future videos, I am going to get right to the point and drop the truth bombs and then I'm going to follow up with providing supporting evidence and making my case. The first truth bomb sounds so crazy that you're probably just going to think that I'm nuts or a conspiracy theorist. If so, please stick around and let me show you the evidence. So today's truth bomb is, if you think you own stock, you almost certainly are wrong. And it doesn't matter if you're on E-Trade or if you're a Robin Hooder what trading platform you use, or even again, if you just have a 401k or pension fund, you most likely don't own any of it, unless you are either extremely wealthy or unless you are a very savvy investor. And I'm not playing word games here. This isn't just a matter of semantics. In the current state of affairs, you are literally exposed to losing everything. And I'm not talking about a stock market crash. I'm talking about that your ownership of what you think you own is just gone. So a book came out about a year ago that shines a light onto what I'm telling you. Um, if any of you have heard of The Great Taking, or better yet, if you've read it, then you already know where I'm going with this. But unfortunately, far too many people are aware of it. The author has provided the book. It's available online for free. Uh, I have a link below in the description and I will give you a brief summary. If you choose to read it, I will just let you know that there is a rather long introduction that gives a lot of background information on the author. It, you know, it explains how he knows what he knows, but I'll admit it's kind of long and I like to jump in and get the, uh, get the information. Now I need to make my very first YouTube shout out to a channel and it goes to the channel Parallel Systems links to his channel and a couple of what I consider his better videos are in the description and I encourage you to sub to him he's really done a great job the reason I'm giving him a shout out is he's one of the first people that really spread the word about the great taking he's very knowledgeable about it and has done a great job of explaining it to people I will say regarding parallel systems he does not always explain things at a beginner level so if you're kind of new to economics and investing, some of what he says may go over your head, but don't sweat it. One of my favorite things about Parallel Systems is it's his channel name, Parallel Systems. He's not just pointing out problems. And a lot of times, you know, we hear stuff like this and we feel helpless. We're like, what am I supposed to do about it? Vote harder? Go Rambo? Not the best plan. So what Parallel Systems recommends is to build systems outside of the tyrannical control system that we're in. Get into homesteading, become friends with farmers and other people that produce things, barter, and over time you strengthen your own parallel system and you start ignoring the primary system of control that is being used against you. To put it in more biblical terms, flee Babylon, get out of Babylon. Anyway, end of shout out, back to the great taking. As far as your ownership of stock goes, if you hold stock certificates with your name and the number of shares printed on the certificate, congratulations, you are one of the few that actually own the shares of stock that you think you own. But what if you just have shares that are like on E-Trade or Robinhood or some other platform, or you have a 401k or whatever? Well, I'd like to tell you that those platforms are holding stock certificates with your name on them and they're just filed away but as you may have guessed that isn't the case in fact those stock certificates with your name on them don't exist anywhere the next thing that i thought was well okay so e-trade or whatever has all of these big blocks of stock and then they just keep track of which customers own how many shares of what company you know then when you want to trade they just make changes to their computer records and they keep things up to date like that but unfortunately it's even worse than that there is a company called seed and company the word seed supposedly is derived from certificate depository but it is also of interest to note that the word seed means to give up power or territory, such as he ceded control of the company to his brother. Wow. It's like they came right out and named their company that you're giving up your uh, rights to something. So I encourage you, Google Seed and Company and check out the Wikipedia entry or anything else you can find. There's tons of stuff out there. On, on this. I'll be the first to admit that Wikipedia is not exactly an authoritative source. However, this particular article is very well documented, has links to lots of source material. If that's not good enough for you, do whatever research seems good uh, to convince yourself or, you know, prove me wrong. Trust me, I would love to be proved wrong on this. So from Wikipedia, it says, Seed & Company, also known as Seed & Co, 
is a specialist United States financial institution that processes transfers of stock certificates on behalf of Depository Trust Company, the central securities depository used by the United States National Market System, which includes the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. Seed and Company is shorthand for the phrase certificate depository, but appropriately the word seed means to give up because investors give up their stock and companies give up their shareholders to an intermediary. So seed technically owns most of the publicly issued stock in the United States. Thus, most investors do not themselves hold direct property rights in stock, but rather have contractual rights that are part of a chain of contractual rights involving seed. Securities held at Depository Trust Company are registered in its nominee name, Seed & Co., and recorded on its books in the name of the brokerage firm through which they were purchased. On the brokerage firm's books, they are assigned to the accounts of the beneficial owners. Seed owns 83% of all issued stocks in the United States. The other 17% of all issued stock is owned by directly registered holders through the direct registration system. If you have stock certificates that you physically have with your name on them, you're part of that 17%. Please dig deeper into Depository Trust Company and Seed and Company. There is a ton of information out there. Everything that I have looked at supports the case that I'm presenting to you. I would absolutely love to be proven wrong. Seed and Company was founded in 1996, and I believe the Depository Trust Company goes back to the 1960s. Essentially what happened is as stock trading became more popular, and especially with the rise of things like day trading or very active trading, such as trades that are executed by algorithms, it became incredibly inefficient, if not impossible, to keep reissuing stock certificates in new owners' names and destroying old obsolete stock certificates from the old owners. And so uh, these companies were essentially set up and again, Seed & Co. holds 83% of all stock in their own name. The stocks are issued to Seed & Company as the owner. And then Seed & Company then keeps computer records of the ownership of large blocks of stock, not for individual retail investors like you and me, but rather again, just for the big platforms like Robinhood. For instance, they might have an entry that says Robinhood owns 100 million shares of Apple or 54 million shares of NVIDIA or whatever. And the same for all the other trading platforms or brokerages, and they keep these records up to date in real time. So ownership is just shifting among these other big companies. And then those individual companies keep a similar record, but that does go down to the individual investor. So, you know, they know that Bob Smith owns 50 shares of General Motors and Tom Jones owns 173 shares of ConAgra and so forth. This is actually very efficient and has clearly worked well for decades in the case of Depository Trust Company and for a bit over a quarter of a century in the case of Seed & Company. So what's the harm? This is where we have to get a little more into the weeds of how finance works and I'm gonna give you a brief explanation of Exter's Pyramid. And I'll be doing a full video later on Exter's Pyramid, but for today's video, we're gonna keep it really simple. So Exter's Pyramid is an upside down pyramid. And the important thing to remember is that things lower in the pyramid represent less risk and also less possibility of a return. So the higher you go up the pyramid, it's higher risk, but there's also a chance to make a lot more money in those higher risk investments. So at the very top of this pyramid, the most risky investment is something called derivatives. And the truth is we really don't know exactly how much money is into derivatives. Estimates range from one to four quadrillion dollars, which is an incomprehensibly large number. And the best way to think of derivatives is, is that they are simply side bets. The movie The Big Short has an excellent explanation of derivatives and I will uh, try to find a clip and link that in the description. For sure, owning stock is also a bet on a company, but with stock you actually have equity. You own a part of the company, again, assuming that you actually have stock certificates in your name. So, uh, but a, a derivative is just a bet that no ownership of anything is exchanged or even takes place. It's just like you telling a friend, I'll bet you $100 that Brent crude will go over $150 a barrel in the next six months. Or if you give me 10 to 1 odds, I'll bet you $5,000 that the Dallas Cowboys win the next Super Bowl. And I mean, seriously, that is all a derivative is, is it's a, it's a, it's a bet. As it's on the very top of the pyramid, there is potential for huge wins, 
but also there's a potential to lose everything. In some cases, you can, you can, it's even possible to lose more than the bet that you placed. So what does all of this have to do with seed and company and the great take? Because in times of economic growth, money tends to move up the pyramid into riskier and riskier investments. And people do that because again, there's a lot more chance to make big money and there's a belief that the market only goes up. And as more and more people just feel like that you're crazy not to be in the market, money just floods in and again, it keeps moving up the pyramid. And in some cases, people even borrow money and lots of it so that they can basically place bets. And those lending the money uh, want collateral. So in case your investment goes bad, they still have a way to recover the money that they lent. And here is where you and Seed and Company come in. Brace yourself because this is not good news. Seed and Company use those stock certificates which are issued in their name after all as collateral to get money to invest in derivatives. And the lender has a claim on that stock that takes priority over you, the supposed owner of the stock. And even more alarming is that multiple loans can be made on the same collateral on the same stock certificate. So think of it like having a second, third, or fourth mortgage on your home. And the difference is, is that many more levels of borrowing are allowed on these stock certificate collateral than would ever be allowed on your home. So that stock that you think that you own, you literally could be third, fourth, or farther down the line as a claimant to, to that stock. And sadly, the odds are never in your favor. If things go south, you are gonna be the, the one holding nothing. And again, everything is in our legal system set up that those creditors that have a claim are ahead of you in line. So I'm not qualified and I don't even want to give anyone financial advice. Like I said, I'm just providing the information that I believe is correct. And please prove me wrong. Comment below. If you disagree with me, please give me some source material so that I can go and do some further research on. And, um, you know, don't just tell me you're wrong. If nothing else, at least provide a good argument of why you think I'm wrong. And I also get it. If you're hearing this for the first time, I'm sure that your mind is just kind of recoiling and you're like, there is no way that can be right. Because frankly, you just don't want to believe that because it is such a crazy and also scary thing to think that that's the uh, system that we're in. You know, I'm not trying to cause a panic, but I do want to give people a heads up. Please do your research, be careful, and then use your own judgment to act in your best interest. Thank you for your time. And again, I feel like this is critically important information, probably uh, the most, one of the more important things that I'll ever put out. That's why I made it one of my first videos is because I just feel like this is something that people have to be aware of. And I'd really appreciate your help in getting the word out. If you can, please like, share, and subscribe. Share it with anyone who invests, or if you know someone like really super smart, please get them looking at this information and say, prove this guy wrong. I would be so relieved to be proved wrong. And uh, thanks again for your time. God bless and have a great day.